is Unit 5, Right Triangles, Lesson 5.3. So, Katoa, solving for size. Please make sure you get the date and time, as well as a parent or guardian sign off. Let's recap what we have learned so far. There are three techniques you have learned so far in right triangles. One is if you have two sides and if you need a third side, you do that. That, you, that can work on any triangle. Then you have your two what are called special right triangles. 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. Leg, leg, leg root two. And you have your 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90, short leg, short leg root three, short leg times two. You have these three circumstances so far have need to do. Knowing this, you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the unknown. You may not use a calculator, answer in simplified radical form. Then you're going to solve using 45, 45, 90 as a review. Again, answers, all answers in simplified radical form. Then use 30, 60, 90 tables to do these. Answers in simplified radical form. Do this on your own and then restart the video. Pause. Welcome back. Students, did you actually pause and attempt to do the work on your own, or are you just waiting for the answers? It's really important you attempt this on your own before you actually see the answers. Let's go over these. If these two are the legs, and then here was your hypo. So it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypo squared. Always write your equation down. Let's circle plug chuck. One leg was x. The other leg was 8. And our hypo was 10. And this was a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. That is one of your seven triplets that you must have memorized. In this one, 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal. So whatever x is, y is the same. And the hypo is whatever the leg is times root 2. So will you ask yourself, something times root 2 is 5 root 2, and your something had to be 5 for both. Once again, the legs are equal. In this read, something times root 2 again. Something times root 2 is 6. And your something should have been 3 root 2. For both. 30, 60, 90, you always want to find your short leg first because that is your point is your point of reference. If that's 30 degrees, that means this is your short leg. So you start by boxing your short leg. And then we do short leg to hypo is times by two. And then short leg to long leg times by root three. And you ask yourself, which way do we go here? So we have something times two is 20. Something times 2 is 20. Our something has to be 10. And then we come this way. We times it by root 3. That's 10 root 3. Over here, again, you start with the short leg. This is across from the 30 degrees. There's your short leg. We're going to put a box there. Short leg to hypo times by 2. Short leg to long leg times by root 3. So we have this here, something times, it reads like this, something times root 3 is 10 root 3. So you have to work backwards, and you should have figured out that your missing piece here was 10 times by 2, and you get 20. 
Last one. Start again with the short leg. We do our sprout. Short leg to hypo times by two. Short leg to long leg, we times by root three. So this one read like this. Something times root three is root three. And you ask yourself, what would that something have to be? Of course, it would just be one. One times two, that would make that two. Please review those. If you are not getting any of these right or you're having a significant trouble with them, please come see me in tutoring specifically for these special right triangles. Uh, open 1B and of course lunch and after school. A little bit of one-on-one -on -one face to face time with this particular subject goes a very long way to comprehension. Today, I'm introducing concepts that you will see in multiple future classes and a variety of professional contexts. We are learning something called so ka toa. These are the vocabulary words you need. Trigonometry, sine ratio, cosine ratio, tangent ratio, leg, hypotenuse. You are going to need a scientific calculator on hand. So you need to either have one of these smaller scientific calculators, preferably the TI-30 is fine, or a larger TI-84. And I'm going to show you how to use both of these today. So we've had three circumstances. Pythagorean theorem, have two sides, need a third side, Pythag. 45, 45, 90 triangles, and 30, 60, 90 triangles. The question is this. What if the angles in the triangle are neither 30, 60, 90, nor 45, 45, 90? What if we have a side here of 5 and something like 32 degrees? This scenario does not use either 45, 30, or 60. What do you do to work with a triangle if you want it to solve for an unknown here? The answer, we're going to use trigonometric ratios, I say ratios, not rations, called sine, cosine, tangent. Keep in mind, ratios is just something over something. Don't let this confuse you, because ultimately, remember the unit where 90% of, of what we did was simply solving for a proportion? Write this down. You recognize this? Guess what? Ultimately, what we're doing in the next 25 minutes is going to boil down yet again to one of these. Don't freak out when stuff starts looking really fancy. It's not fancy. You've seen it before. But before you can use these ratios, you have to use some vocabulary here. We're going to learn the vocabulary hypotenuse, which you already know. But I'm going to teach you the words called opposite and adjacent. You also need to learn a little bit of Greek. We're going to use the variable theta, the Greek letter, to represent an unknown angle. Why am I introducing the concept of theta for an angle? Because both in chemistry, physics, algebra 2, and trigonometry, trigonometry, that is the variable we're going to use. Theta represents angles specifically. So your vocabulary is hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Let's start with something simple here. The hypotenuse never changes. Darken this right angle. Now go here and it points to the longest side, that's always the, hypo, the hypotenuse. Same thing over here. Physically darken the right angle. That is the hypo. That will never change. However, the word opposite and the word adjacent can change depending on where theta is. For example, sweep the theta here. This is the angle we're working with. Sweep it. 
Now, draw an arrow directly across from that angle theta. That's now the opposite side. Right here, next to it, but not the hypo, that is the adjacent side. Come over here, sweep theta again. Draw an arrow across from theta. That's going to be your opposite side. And then right next to it, that is adjacent. Ready? Let's try this again, just so you know. When I say theta, theta is simply the angle that's being involved. So for example, sweep the 32 degrees. That's our theta. Find your hypo first. There's your right angle. Notice I'm darkening the right angle. There's my hypo. Put your pencil on the angle involved. Go directly across. That's opposite. And next to, that's called adjacent. It is super, super important that you're able to properly label these triangles. So I like you to pause and label these two triangles with the words hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Do this yourself and then restart the video. Pause. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Let's find the hypo first. That's always the easiest. That makes this the hypo. And then this, that 54 degrees is our theta. That's the angle we're working with. So Y here would be considered the opposite. And X would be the adjacent. And this one, hypo is always the hypo that never changes. I'm going to keep my color scheme the same here. So if that's your right angle, here's your hypo. The theta I'm working with is 21 degrees, so I go across, and this is your opposite, and then next to it, but not the hypo, this is your adjacent. If you did this correctly, you're ready to move on. If you did not, go back and review the last two pages, make sure you understand this before we move on. Now that you know the vocabulary of opposite, adjacent, and hypo, so the vocabulary you need to have is working with the hypotenuse, working with the opposite side, and working with the adjacent side. That's the vocabulary that you need to have working. We're going to work with ratios. The ratio of two sides of a right triangle in reference to a certain angle, those ratios have names. There are certain kinds of names. When I say certain angle, that's our reference angle that we call theta. You're going to want your calculator, Sandy. Ready? Okay. It says sweep angle A. Physically sweep angle A. Now, label opposite, adjacent, and hypo. Here's your right angle, so there's your hypo. Across from A is 3, so that is your opposite. And then next to A is your adjacent. Now, there's a particular ratio I want you to use, and that's opposite over adjacent. Let's write it like this so you can see it as a vertical fraction. Opposite over hypo. Excuse me. OH. OH. Ready? We're going to write that fraction out together. Make a fraction bar. Now, from A... Draw your line. Our opposite number is 3. Our hypo is 5. And then you simply 
divide, to get the decimal, you divide 3 by 5, or you know 3 fifths of a dollar. A fifth of a dollar is 20 cents, 3 fifths of a dollar is 60 cents. So I already know that this is 0 0.600. We always take it to the fourth decimal place when we're working with these ratios. Now those of you who are skeptical of my ability to do that in my head, you simply go like this, 3 divided by 5 and 0 0.6. Let's try the next one. This one is adjacent over hypo. Adjacent over hypo. So this is AH. Write it like this, AH. And our adjacent is going to be 4. And our hypo is going to be 5. 4 fifths of a dollar. One-fifth is 20 cents, four-fifths is 80 cents. So that's going to be 0 0.800. Again, if you're skeptical, we simply do 4 divided by 5, and it is 0 0.8000. So we have opposite over hypo, adjacent over hypo, and then the last combination that we're learning is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. And our opposite number here is going to be opposite is 3. Our adjacent here is 4. 3 fourths of a dollar. 75 cents. Take it to the fourth decimal place. Now, these certain ratio combinations, all of these are ratios. Don't freak out. They're simply ratios. They have fancy names. The first one, opposite over hypo, has the name called sine. So this first one is called the sine ratio. The second one, adjacent over hypo, that's called the cosine ratio. And the third one is called the tangent ratio. So to remember them, we have this acronym. Sine of an angle theta equals opposite over hypo. That's where we get so from, just circle these words, sine of theta equals opposite over hypo, that gives us the acronym SO. If you want to think of it, think of someone trying to prove a point and they say SO, like they're trying to make a point. Then you have the cosine ratio, cosine equals adjacent over hypo, and that gives us CHI. I want you to think of the think of a crow pine in your backyard saying ka ka. Last one is the tangent ratio. Tangent equals opposite over adjacent. When you're walking along and someone accidentally stomps on your toe and you pick up your toe and you say toe like you're in pain. So here's the acronym. So, like you're proving a point, ka, like you're a crow, toa, like you're in pain and you got your toes stepped on. Let's try this next page. I'd like you to use these ratios, find the required ratios in the given triangles round to the fourth decimal place. I'm going to scroll down here, so we're going to bring Sokotoa down here. Just rewrite it. Okay, I'll do this first one with you. We are told our reference angle is angle Z, so Z is your theta. Now label your opposite, adjacent, and hypo. There's your right angle, 29 is the hypo. That makes 
21 the opposite, and that makes 20 the adjacent. Cosine is right here. Cosine is ah, ah. So we are going to do adjacent over hypo. Take a look here. Our adjacent side is 20. Our hypo is 29. At this point, you may get out your calculator. And we're simply going to do 20 divided by 29. And round it to the fourth decimal place, which is 0 0.68. 9, and then that 6 becomes a 7, so it's 68.97. That is the cosine ratio of angle Z. I'd like you to do this one on your own. Pause the video, then restart. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Step one is you label. There's your right angle. That makes this the hypo. Our reference angle is angle A. So we sweep angle A. That means 8 has to be our opposite. And 15 has to be our adjacent. So tangent is TOA, which is opposite over adjacent. So in this case, our opposite is 8. Our adjacent is 15. So you simply come over here, and we're going to do 8 divided by 15. Take it to the fourth decimal place. That's 0 0.53 repeating. Now, there are literally hundreds of ratios in reference to certain angles. And we have giant charts of these. And I'm going to show you in class the actual physical charts that are used. But the good news is, is you don't have to use the giant charts. I will show you how to use them once we're in class. But these ratios of the giant charts, Sokotoa ratios, are actually stored in your calculator using these buttons, the sine, cosine, tangent button. See them? Sine, cosine, tangent. If you can't see those three buttons, you have a wrong calculator, immediately go buy another one. So that you see those. So the ratios, there's literally hundreds of them, different combinations with different sides and different angles, but they're stored in your calculator using this. I will show you the physical charts in class. So you're going to get to use a shortcut on your calculator. I'd like you to try these two sides on your own. Restart the video. Let's try this one. I'm going to make this a little shortcut and not color code it. That's is opposite and angle Z. That makes 12 our opposite, and that makes this our adjacent. Sign is opposite over hypo. Our opposite here is 12. Our hypo is 37. So we do 12 divided by 37. That's 32, 43. This one, we're doing cosine of angle A, so we sweep A. That makes this the opposite, this the adjacent, and here is the hypo. Cosine is adjacent over hypo, like a crow. Our adjacent in this case is 24. Our hypo is 40. And our 
course, that is 0 0.6. Again, these ratios are all stored in your calculator. You just need to know where they come from. All these fancy decimals are simply fractions in reference to a certain triangle, angle, and combination. Don't freak out just because the decimals are long. All they are are fractions. And now I'm going to show you how to work with these ratios to get odd number angles. You start by labeling things opposite, adjacent, and hypo. Then if you're going to find the side of the angle, we're going to do half, need, do. And then we're going to set up a proportion. Put this in the margin of your paper so you don't freak out. This is something you are so familiar with you're ultimately going to be making one of these. We've done this before. It's just going to have fancy names attached to it. And the proportion is going to be one of three proportions. Either it's going to be the sine proportion, sine of theta over one equals opposite over hypo, the cosine proportion, cosine theta adjacent over hypo, or the tangent proportion. Tangent of theta over 1 equals opposite over adjacent. One of these three scenarios. Let me show you how you're going to use it. All right, step number one is you want to label the triangle here. We start with our reference theta. Okay, so your reference angle is 24. So from 24, we find our opposite, which is x. Our hypo, of course, is across from the right angle. And then our adjacent is next to the angle, but not the hypo. So this is adjacent. You ask yourself, what do you have and what do you need? This is critical. Watch this very carefully. Have. I have the hypo side. Now that it's labeled, you want to ask yourself what you have and what you need, and then we'll determine what you do. You have a number on the hypo, so come over here and write the word hypo. We need our opposites. And you ask yourself, what do you do? We have an HO combination. Now, HO combination and OH is exactly the same thing. Be very careful. You use, we're going to use SO. Why? Because only sign goes with O and H, and it has to be in that exact setup every single time. So what do we do? You write your equation out exactly like you see it. So it's sine of theta over 1 equals opposite over hypo. That is the so. Why did I choose so? Because I have an OH combo. It doesn't matter whether it's HO or OH, but that is the order you always go in. So, sine opposite over hypo. Now you do circle plug chuck. Very carefully follow with me sine of theta, circle theta, and our theta that we're going to use here is 24. So we write sine 24 degrees over 1 equals our opposite, which is x, over hypo, we circle it, which is 16. Now, it's very important, you never, ever, ever touch a calculator until your X is completely isolated. So from here, we simply cross multiply. 
and we're going to write out exactly what you see. So we are t writing out sine 24 degrees. Put parentheses around that. Equal or times, excuse me, 16 equals 1 times x. Okay, now you ask yourself, is x by itself? And the answer is, right now, it is. It's very important. This is not 24. This is a single unit sine of 24. Make sure you teach that as a unit. So now, in your calculators, I'm going to show you how to find sine of 24. That ratio times 16 equals So on your calculators, we have to find the sine of 24, and there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do this. Sine of 24. Step number one, you make sure your degree, your calculator is in degree mode. So right there, the small calculator is automatically in degree mode. You should have followed for your larger calculator you should have followed the video to get that in degree mode already. I'm going to do that right now. There was a video for this, so I'm going to do it real quick. Degree, enter, clear. We want to find the sine of 24. In the smaller calculator, you simply do 24 sine. Larger calculator, it's sine of 24. Enter. You should be getting the same thing. Look very carefully. Do this now in your calculator. Make sure you're getting the same thing. It's 0 0.4067. We round it to the tenths place. 4067. And then we're going to simply times that by 16. So on the larger calculator, we can do this. Times by 16, enter. You're going to round it to the second decimal place. Larger calculator, we times by 16, enter. Same thing, round it to the second decimal place. 6.51. So our x here is going to be the length 6.51. Get over being afraid of decimal. Every single answer will be a decimal. Okay, example number two. First you find your reference angle. Our reference angle is this 32. So our hypo is across from the right angle. And then our opposite is opposite the 32, and adjacent is the one next to it. And we do have, need, do. We have, in this case, the opposite side. So come over here, opposite. And this time we want the adjacent. We have an OA combo. Now, even if this read AO, we still write it as an OA combo. What goes with OA is TOA. Remember the hurt toe? TOA! So the ratio looks like this. Tangent of theta over 1 equals opposite over adjacent. So now we circle, plug, chug. Tangent of theta, so we're going to write tangent of our theta is 32 degrees. Put parentheses around that so you see it as a single unit. Over 1 equals opposite, and our opposite here is 12, and then our adjacent is x. Okay, now we're going to cross multiply and solve, just like we've been doing since fourth grade. We're going to cross multiply here. 
So the next step looks like to physically draw it. The next line's going to read, we're going to come over here, tangent of 32 degrees, keep parentheses around that, time x equals 12. <laughs> Do not touch a calculator before you get x by itself. So do not touch a calculator yet. So we're going to divide by tangent of 32 degrees. Notice you keep that together. We're going to cancel that out. So x is going to equal 12 divided by the tangent of 32. Okay, now that you have x by itself, now you can go to your calculator. And so we're going to do 12 divided by the tangent of 32. And it looks like this on your calculator. Okay, so it's easier to see on the larger calculator first. So once again, we're doing 12 divided by the tangent of 32. So in the larger calculator, you put in 12 and hit the divided by tangent 32 degrees. Close that parentheses up. See how it looks almost exactly what's on your paper. Hit the enter. Now in this one, it takes a little bit more footwork. Watch very carefully. You do 12 divided by 32 tan, so it's a little bit backwards, but you should, whoops, let's try that again, 12 divided by 32 tan, and then you have to hit the equal sign. And so notice we get the same thing, you round it to the second decimal place, that's 19.20, 19.20. So our x is 19.20. And then you just kind of do a little spot check. If this is 32, we know over here would have to be 58. And the larger angle goes with the longer side. If that's 12, then our x had to be bigger than 12. So it's kind of easy to spot check these for accuracy. I'm going to do one more with you, and then you're going to do two on your own. You'll get a rhythm of this. Have, need, do. You label a hypo. We sweep our reference angle. This makes this our opposite side. And this makes this our adjacent side. We have in this case, the adjacent side. We need, in this case, the hypo. And what do we do? Well, we have, right here, we have an AH combo, AH. Now, even if this read HA, you would still write it as AH because our ratio is ha cosine. You write it just like this. Cosine, COS is the abbreviation of theta, over 1 equals adjacent over hypo. Always write your original equation down. Never attempt to plug in numbers right off the bat. Now we circle plug chuck. Doing cosine theta. Our theta is 40 degrees, so we write it like this. Cosine 40 degrees, parentheses around that, over 1, equals adjacent. Our adjacent is 19. And then we circle hypo, and our hypo this time is x. And once again, back down to cross multiply. Cross multiply. Do not touch a calculator until x is by itself. So we write it like this, cosine 40 degrees, keep parentheses around that, times x. The 
equals 19. Ask yourself, is x by itself? And the answer is no. So keep your mitts off your calculator. So we need to get rid of cosine 40, so we're going to divide both sides by cosine 40 degrees. Keep parentheses around that. So to solve for x, we are going to do 19 divided by cosine of 40 degrees. And that is going to give us our x. So in our calculators, again, it's 19 divided by cosine 40. On the larger calculator, that's easier to see. So we're doing 19 divided by cosine 40 degrees. Close up the parentheses. Enter. Smaller calculator, it takes a little extra footwork. You're doing 19 divided by 40 cosine, and then you have to hit the equal sign. You should be getting the same thing. Take it to the second decimal place, 24.80, 24.80. And that is our X. Okay, you take a shot at these two on your own. It's okay to flounder along and then restart the video. Please attempt to do this on your own before we get started. Okay, let's see how you did here. First, your reference angle is 18. That would make this the opposite side. This is your adjacent side and your hypotenuse. Okay, so we do have mean do. We have, in this case, the hypo. So we write the word hypo. We need, in this case, the adjacent side. So we have the adjacent. So we have an AH combo. And you ask yourself, in so katoa, you should have gotten ka. Ah! And it looks like this. Cosine theta over 1 equals adjacent over hypo. You always put it in that order. Adjacent over hypo. Now we cross multiply. We plug your stuff in. Whoops, we got to plug our stuff in first. So it's cosine of 18 degrees. Put parentheses around that over 1 equals adjacent, which is 18. Excuse me, our adjacent is x. And our hypo is 21. You cross multiply. Your next line reads x equals cosine 18 degrees times 21. So your x is by itself. So now you can just plug this in your calculator. So cosine 18 times 21 looks like this. Cosine. Cosine 18 times 21. Over here, we're going to do cosine first. So once again, it's cosine 18 degrees. So this one's 18 cosine and then times 21. You should be getting the exact same thing. Then you round to the second decimal, 19.97. check to see how you did with this one. We have, I'm going to start shortcutting a little bit, we have, this would be our opposite, so we have the opposite, and we needed the hypo. We have an OH combo, so that goes with the ratio <coughs> sign. Cross multiply, and we plug stuff in, and we should be getting sine of 50 degrees over 1 equals our opposite, which is 16. 
over our hypo, which is x. Don't touch a calculator until x is by itself. You're going to end up here with x equals 16 divided by sine of 50, if you cross multiply correctly. So 16 divided by the sine of 50. Take a look over here. Again, that's 16 divided by the sine of 50. So it looks like this. Bigger calculator, 16 divided by sine of 50. Over here, it's the other way around. So we do 16 divided by 50 sine. Then you have to hit the equal sign. You should be getting the same thing. 20.8 down to the second decimal place. We're going to do 8.9. 20.89. Get over your fear of decimals. Everything you do will be a decimal. 20.89, which makes sense because the hypo is the longest length. Therefore, our x should be longer than 16. You got all those correct. Congratulations. You should be feeling really smart right now.